this. What have I done? My God. What's up, everybody? Got a special one for you today. Uh, candy paint, right? You know it looks sick, all right? You can be a hater, you can say, oh, I don't care for that shit, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know it looks sick, dude. You want a candy paint job on your car, you just don't want to pay someone to do it. You want to do it yourself, right? Now you're watching this video. Yeah. So, uh, I'm gonna give you guys some tips and some tricks and stuff on how to make it as easy as possible. Uh, it's a little bit challenging. Um, you can pull it off though. As long as you drink uh, like 10 cups of coffee and you're hyper-focused and uh, maybe even some pills. Disregard that last part. It was satirical purposes only, obviously. You know, anything that's gonna make you because you gotta really pay attention when you're spraying this stuff. What have we done so far? The whole car is doo-doo brown. Uh, why, you might ask? Well, the color is this, well, this is the ground color. It's a very deep maroon, burgundy, uh, metallic color. And this is a red oxide primer that I tinted with a little bit of black to just make it value shaded really, really close to that stuff. That way we get really good coverage. I was actually able to shoot the roof and the jams and everything with two coats of base, got full coverage. So that's pretty cool. And you're also probably wondering, well, why did you already paint the roof and the jams and everything? So there's a million different ways to do a candy paint job, okay? You see a lot of different videos. You see guys painting in a shed with the doors and everything on and they're opening the doors while they're spraying and they're shooting down in there, they're trying to you know get all fancy with it and stuff. Uh, generally, not talking trash, but uh, normally in these areas, back in here uh, and underneath, down in here, uh, when those paint jobs are done in that manner, they look terrible because you can't hit all that stuff really nicely and wet it all out uh, with all the parts on the car. It's pretty much impossible. What I did is what's called the cut-in. So all of these jams, if you want to look, you can see how there's color down in there. There's color all inside here. There's color on the roof panel already because we have a nice seam here with a drip rail that separates it. So I was able to break off the roof and spray the roof separately. Essentially, the first tip, here's tip number one, right? You paying attention? Tip number one, make it as like break it down into bite-sized chunks like make it as easy as possible for you to succeed because if you spend time now as opposed to trying to just slam through the whole thing as fast as possible and spray it with the doors on it and you're trying to spray the jams at the same time and you're trying to spray the roof and you're trying to spray all this stuff if you can get away with doing something like that on your car then do it the name of the game is consistency so if you can replicate the look that's on the roof and how you sprayed the roof on the rest of the car, then it's not a problem. Like I'm gonna shoot the bumpers and everything off the car as well. Why? Because it's easier. There's less stuff to do. Tip number two kind of goes in line with that. We're taking our time on this, okay? Yesterday, I sprayed the sealer on this car and it's an epoxy sealer, right? By our good friends over at SPI. This is not a paid advertisement. However, I endorse their products because they're great and they work well and they're affordable and they're available to the average consumer. If you call them, you can order them, right? You don't have to go to some crazy job or place, set up an account and do all that stuff. You can just go to SPI, Southern Polyurethanes.com and you can buy the stuff yourself. We've got one-to-one -one epoxy sealer on the whole thing, reduced 25%. It's all laid out really nice and smooth. Looks a little patchy, but that's just because it's epoxy. So we're not worried about that as long as the actual finish of it is all nice and smooth and consistent. You don't want dry spots and light spots, you know, obviously, in any coating that you're doing. So we've got a whole nice slick coat of epoxy. It's been on here now for about 24 hours. This has a 48 hour open window, which means I can recoat this without sanding up to 48 hours. So what I did was I had everything all apart I had all the jams and everything masked off, and then I sprayed the epoxy on everything. 
So you'll be able to see here, if you look close, there's a hard, there was a hard tape line right on this hard 90 degree bend where I shot the sealer and then while it was still wet, I peeled off the tape. This morning I came in and I took a little piece of 1200 grit and I just gently ran down the edges around everything. So that allowed me to have exposed color next to all my soft edge tape, but have sealer all the way up to the edge, just like how it should be on the whole thing. Also, I was able to go around this morning and if there was any dust nibs in the sealer, that's what all these spots are, I was able to go around and just tap those dust nibs flat. So now we got a really nice blank canvas. We've got the smallest amount of work possible to do all at once while still getting all, you know, the whole chassis and everything shot. And we've got good access to a lot of our jams and edges and everything. The fenders are bolted on with a huge gap so we're able to get down on these edges of the hood because these cars are terrible and they have these stupid edges that go back about a half inch around the seam of every single panel. It's probably a wind noise thing or something, I don't know, but it's terrible. It's really hard for painting. Your car is probably not gonna be like this. Most cars aren't like this. Now that we got the prep work covered, how about spraying it? What's so different? Why is it so hard? Well, you're gonna be spraying a lot of paint all at once, which is what makes the process a little difficult. You run the risk of trapping solvents, dieback, stuff like that. Uh, there's a lot of coats for dust to accumulate. It's a little bit more time consuming. It's a little bit more tedious. This paint job is gonna probably take me about six to eight hours today. So make sure you have plenty of time set aside to do your candy paint job. Pro tip number three, four, three, three. I have my base coat in here, this beautiful ruby red. This is actually a Chrysler, it's called Primal Ruby Red, is the name of the, the color. Yeah, if you guys wanna steal my color codes. I chose this because it actually gives, you'll see when it's all done, it gives the color a really nice dark flop but it glows really nice and has a really fine pearl in there. There's no real like metallics, there's just mica and pearls in it, which gives it like a really nice subtle glow. It's a really beautiful color. And then I actually went with uh, this candy powder by Did Spade that reduces one to one in a clear inner coat. If you don't know what that is, that's just clear base coat. So you dump it into the reducer, you, dump, you stir it up, and then you strain it into the clear base coat, mix it up, and then it's ready to spray. We've got this base coat mixed two to one. Luma Base base coat with the SPI slow reducer in it because it is, oh Jesus, 90 degrees in here right now. We're probably gonna be putting some very slow in the last couple coats of this. But this is something very important that's going to save you guys a lot of potential headaches. Again, take your time on this paint job. I'm gonna spray this first coat of base on this sealer that's been sitting for 24 hours already. So already taking a long ass time, letting the solvents gas out, letting them do their thing, letting that whole thing cure up real nice. Then I'm spraying this over top and I'm gonna give it at least 30 minutes in between coats, if not an hour. So this is already reduced two to one. We have a little bit of SPI uh, clear coat activator. We're gonna mix this in here at five to 10% of the, uh, the volume that's in here. We've got 44 ounces. What's math? Uh, 44 ounces times 0 0.05. That's gonna give you 5%. So 2.2 ounces. Wow, look at that. You guys learned a whole lot of stuff already. This video just started. We're gonna do 2.2 ounces of some catalyst in there. Why are we doing that, you might ask? Well, I tried to set this up in a way that I was able to do the smallest amount of coats possible, right? There's a threshold you can't pass with candy is really, um, wherein if you make the tint coat, the actual candy coat, 
too concentrated, it makes it a bit difficult to spray because you're getting so much pigment on there all at once. It's gonna be really prone to get uh, tiger stripes and model and stuff like that. Um, so there's kinda, you can't like over tint the crap out of the, um, the candy coat and try to do it all at once. That's why you see guys spraying four, five, six, seven coats of candy uh, to try to get the effect that they want. So what I did was we did the tinted sealer that's as close as possible to the base. So we get good coverage on the base, hopefully only two coats of base, two coats of candy, right? Which four coats in total is not too bad for a candy job. And we're mixing the catalyst in there as well, which is gonna help with the base coat drying because the base coat, aside from your primer coat, is your top two points of failure for any paint job, okay? Because the base coat doesn't have catalyst in it generally. So we're adding a little bit in there. Most manufacturers say that you can do this. Check with your manufacturer, your base coat, to make sure that you're able to do it. This is all mixed up. So the next step, see that little Bluetooth speaker over here in the corner? We're gonna put on some good tunes. We're gonna chill the fuck out. Maybe we're gonna say a prayer to the old man upstairs, you know? <laughs> say, hey man, <laughs> I don't know if you're real or not, but <laughs> if you are, <laughs> Your boy can really use a little bit of help today. <laughs> uh. So first coat, gonna be real careful. I'm gonna try to blast into the edges just a little bit. Make sure that we're getting good coverage around every corner, nook and cranny around the whole thing. Undersides, wheel arches, na 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 na. We're gonna try to get all that covered up real good in coat number one. Coat number two, focus on making sure the metallics are all orientated nice. Um, that's another big thing. If you're, you know, doing a candy job, your metallics in your base coat need to be perfect. Otherwise, it's going to look terrible and you're going to be redoing it, which is an expensive redo. So would not recommend. I could do a whole nother separate video uh, completely talking about how to spray metallics and getting you know your metallic paint and your base coat to lay out real nice, but I figured I could at least give you guys a couple quick tips. On the first coat, we're mostly just going for coverage. We're gonna lay it out real nice and wet. We're gonna go ahead and get everything to flow out and we're trying to essentially just establish coverage. But on your second or third coat, whatever your final coat's gonna be, generally what I'll do is drop the pressure down a little bit so uh, a lot of people will be telling you to spray base coat at two bar or whatever. Uh, I honestly have never done that. I never really thought it was a good idea. I mean, I've sprayed with guns that they recommend that and you can get it to look all right. But generally speaking, for me, pretty much any gun I use, it's a lot easier to spray base at like lower pressure. Depending on the gun, I'll normally adjust it down somewhere in like the 20 PSI range for the last coat and just kind of stay back a little bit further but you still wanna make sure that you're wetting it out real good. You don't wanna be like dusting that base on there, right? You want the droplets to be landing like super wet on the surface so the solvents can pool and they can really do their thing. Y'all think I'm blowing smoke when I say that that SPI shit is where it's at, but I'm not. Look at this base, show them. No other reducer that you're gonna buy for $60 a gallon is gonna lay base like that. That's silky smooth, bro. That's what you want. We already looked over with the color light, right? We turn the lights off in here. If you're in your garage or whatever, turn it off. Uh, get a nice bright light and start looking around it. 
Uh, generally, like a regular flashlight won't really work. You want to use something that replicates the, the, the same hue as the sun or whatever. But it can still so, show you some stuff and you can definitely still look for coverage and stuff. Look around all your edges and corners, make sure you're not missing anything. We're mainly just looking to make sure that the metallic is nice and slick and we're not seeing patches where it's darker and lighter and stuff, which is model, right? Or tiger stripes, right? We don't want any stripes, especially, because then it's gonna look like you striped the candy, even if you didn't. Um, and yeah, it looks great. So we're moving on to uh, two coats of that bloodshot candy. Woo, woo. Kind of unlike the base coat, with the candy coat, you want to spray each one of your coats pretty much identical. And that being said, the process you should follow is just attempting to be as even and consistent as you can. If you have any doubt in your mind that you can't lay it out nice and smooth and consistent, you probably shouldn't be doing it. You want to make sure that the surface is just wetting out real nice and even. Your overlap staying consistent at about 75%. I know a lot of guys say 50, but I like to stay back a little further and overlap a little heavier. That definitely helps with uh, preventing tiger stripes and stuff like that. And all I'm doing while I'm spraying this is just watching the surface. I'm trying to get a real nice even sheen of that candy laying down on, the, uh, on top of the base. And then I'm just gonna replicate that on the second coat.